Welcome to Gardening with Daddy Pete. Let's join our host, Melvin York. Well, hello everyone. This is Melvin York and you're listening to Gardening with Daddy Pete. Today is the about the middle of March now and then we are having beautiful weather. Almost 80 degrees today here in the Piedmont and I think we're expecting just a little bit of rain tomorrow. Then next week, the temperatures cool back down. Well, if you have a chance while we're getting done with the podcast there and you listen to that and you want to check out our products and what we do and kind of what we have for you, you can go to daddypeach.com. That's our website. And you can look at our different products. You can find out a little bit about who we are, how long we've been around since about 1907. And you can also click on some of these podcasts. Uh, we do archive them and we got different gardening topics that may help you because gardening season is upon us and we're ready for about seven or eight months of getting on with our vegetables, our yards, our fruits, our herbs, maybe our landscapes. We're going to be doing some things there. I actually was at a garden center on last Saturday, and I was doing a question and answer type series. And one of the things that kept coming up on that particular day was how can I compost? How can I make my own compost? You know, I have leaves. I've got this. I've got that. How can I make my own compost. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over a few things that you need to make your own compost. There's different ways of doing it depending on how much material that you need to compost or waste that you have will depend on a couple things on what you compost in. You will need a vessel or an area to do your composting in. So we're going to get right into that. Some of the things that you need for composting, the four main things you're going to need is carbon, which is your brown colors. That would be your leaves, your dead stems, sticks, older straw, if you've used some laying around. You're going to need nitrogen. That would be your greens, like grass clippings, anything that you're trimming now that is alive and in the green state. That would be your nitrogen source, moisture or water will be your next one and the right amount of that is very very crucial and then naturally air or oxygen this is the four components that it takes to make a good compost the last two which is water and air are very important in seeing how fast that you can decompose those carbon and nitrogens that you have in your bin or in your tumbler or your can, whatever you decide to use. And that's what we'll talk about now. A lot of people take a plastic 55-gallon trash can, drills a few holes in the bottom, some in the side, and you can actually use that. And what you want to do is layer these browns and these greens as you go up through building that layer in your can or even in your tumbler. Now, we want to make sure that moisture is right. You've got to have some bigger pieces so we can get air. So air and moisture is a big thing. So a lot of people like to put sticks in. They'll use straw, bigger chunks of bark. And what I mean by bigger chunks, I'm talking something that half an inch to three quarters of an inch, like a chip of bark on your sticks. You need to keep them the straw size, about a quarter of an inch. You don't want to go too much bigger because, again, it takes longer for them to break down. And if you're after using compost, post quick, then you want to stay with the smaller side, yet that'll still give you a lot of aeration that you're looking for. After you add your browns and your greens, and you say, well, okay, I've got some things inside I want to add to this compost bin. I have some food scraps. Well, let's talk about food scraps that you can add to there. I do not suggest you using any citrus scraps, no meats whatsoever. Keep away from anything that's got high granulated type sugar or processed sugar in it, but you feel free to use all of your greens, your extra lettuces, your peelings from potatoes, use your peelings from cantaloupes. And if you do peel the zucchini or the ends or the squash, use those in there. That's all good for that. Coffee grounds. If you make your own brew like I do myself, I buy the brown biodegradable paper filters and that way when the coffee's brewed I can take that out and that can go into the compost as pile as well which does great. You can do that with tea bags. Just make sure that they are biodegradable. So 
you can have a vast array of things. Leaves, if you have a lot of leaves in your yard, go ahead and save those up. I know a lot of people will bag those leaves, even go down to their neighbors or below, put them in big plastic bags and keep them and add to them as they go across the summer and build their compost. So that's an idea too, if you have a place to store a few bags of the leaves. They will start breaking down in the bags themselves, very little, but somewhat. But you can do that, and then as you mow your lawn, you have the grass clippings when the veggies come in. If you're pruning different things off of your shrubs or perennials, you know, just as long as there's no disease on them, go ahead, throw those in the compost pan whatsoever. Now, we did talk about that you could use like a 55-gallon trash can. You got to drill some holes on the bottom, all up the side. Usually I like to make a hole about three-eighths of an inch big. Don't go too much bigger than that. But if you're doing that, a tumbler always comes with the air holes in it. So you can go ahead and do your layers there and then you turn them. We're going to talk about turning because that's a big thing because we're going to be moving that air around to keep these temperatures up. And then a lot of people will take and build just a wooden bin. And that works really well if you're planning on having a lot of compost. I would suggest you build at least two bins for that you can take and turn it from one bin to the next. That area H your compost at gives all the bacteria, all the microbes oxygen so they can keep working and keep breaking down all of your browns and greens, and that's what you're after there. Now, I did have someone ask me, can I put eggshells in my compost bin? Certainly, but make sure you wash them out first, and here's why. If you put just eggs or, say, some raw eggs in the that compost bin, you may invite some unwanted critters into your compost bin. So do make sure that you do kind of wash those out. And then, yes, that's a good form of calcium that goes into your compost. And that would be great. I suggest that everybody gets a compost thermometer. And they're usually about anywhere from 18 inches to two foot long. The probe will be on it. They have a round head for the thermometer where the dial is. And it makes a difference because you won't to turn by your temperatures. Heat is what is happening when you know all of your microbes, all the bacteria is working, it generates heat. And when you do turn it, you'll see like steam come off if your moisture is right. Now, you don't want to turn that compost any sooner than about 145 degrees and you can go on up to 160 degrees. 65 is, you know, we're kind of flirting with the edge of the dial there. So I like to say between 140, 45 to 160. Now, if you've let your compost sit in there and it hadn't raised to at least 130, 135 degrees, if you're still staying on the low side, could be one or two things. If it's real cold in the winter, the compost process slows down. All the microbes, all the bacteria slows down during that time when it gets real cold. If not, you could have too much moisture. You may need to add some more browns in there, maybe a little more greens, depending on the ratio you put in, but it's always good to kind of go 50-50 there. If your moisture looks right, what you're looking for is about 60, 65% moisture. If you reach in and grab your compost by your hand, mash a fistful of it, and it stays into the shape that you mash, it's way too wet. So you want it where it feels moist to you, but not the where that it will actually cake up like that when you squeeze it. So if your moisture's right, you may need to do this. Use some of our Daddy Pete's composted dairy manure. Buy you a bag of that. And adds to your compost when you're starting. I know people says, well, you can buy compost starters. And yes, you can do all of that. But this compost, our Daddy Pete's Dairy Cow Manure Compost, will get that process started. If you've got that, what I would say is put about 10% of dairy compost into what you have there. So let's just say you have 100 pounds of compost. Just for the sake of numbers, then add 10 pounds of the Daddy Pete's Composted Cow Manure. Spin it over, turn it, get it in there good, and see if that doesn't make a difference. It'll get it started going. When those temperatures start getting up to 140, 45 degrees, go ahead, turn again. And you'll have to keep an eye on it. As the temperatures rise outside, so is that temperatures in that compost bin is going to rise too because your microbes, all your beneficial insects, all of your bacteria is going to be working faster and harder. So you do want to make sure. 
do not let your compost pile go over 170 degrees because you have killed all the beneficial microbes that we're going to use that produces this great rich compost that you're trying to build. So anyway, if you're doing in the bin type, make sure if you build bins to get you a good pitchfork, which is leave a five or a six time or the prongs is sticking out. They make some cheap ones with four prongs. They're wider. Makes it hard to turn that compost and you want to do a thorough job because Here's the thing about it. The first so many inches of compost is going to heat up. That center part may not heat as much or the very outside rims. So you want to turn it. You want to make sure that we kill all the bad bacteria at these temperatures that I told you about, but we don't want to kill the good, the ones that we need to go in our garden. Now, the higher that pile is, the better you have a chance of getting that heat to come up. If you can get a couple put at least 24 inches to 36 inches high, that's when you can really see the heating process starting and those microbes go to work and start decomposing your greens and your brown. So that's just an idea there that you might want to keep in the back of your mind that the height. If you've got seven or eight inches high of something, nine times out of ten, you're not going to see the heat produced unless maybe you do have it in a, one of those uh, bins that you can turn. But I don't really see how that it's going to kick off that quick. If it's not, and you are using a bin, add a little bit more of our dairy compost to that. Give it a chance to go ahead and get working. Make sure that moisture stays right. And I think that you will uh, find that you have some of the best compost around and that you've made yourself. Not only did you get rid of the leaves, they didn't go to the landfill. Not only did your scraps not go to the landfill, but it went back into your plants that you're growing now. So it's that cycle that we're after, and that's that eco-cycle that we're talking about using what we have here. Now, someone asked me, well, I have a few bags of mulch left over. If it's not dying mulch, most definitely use it for a brown. Well, you know, I have some pine needles in my yard. Can I use pine needles for a brown? Most definitely. You can do that. Just make sure that nothing, and just like your yard clippings, make sure that it hadn't been sprayed with some type of weed killer that could stay on the grass. Now, like a 2,4-D type killer. You don't want to put that in your compost bin. So, well, how about if I go out here, I've had my garden, and, I, you know, my squash plants are gone now, and my cucumber plants are dying. Look under the leaves. Make sure you're not inviting a bunch of insects or a disease there. Check out the spots on your leaves. Does it have scab on something? Do not add those to your compost pile. We're trying to make a pile here that is disease-free soil, that's insect-free and weed-free. That's why we go after the temperatures. That's why we want to make sure that uh, we get the most nutritious compost that we can make for our plants. At Daddy Peach, we've been doing composting for over 30 years. And believe me, I like to say, like the owner says, I think we've done it many times wrong as we did right, getting to the point of being right. But we did get there. Didn't take us really that long, just a lot of trials. And like the old fellow says, tribulations. But we use that same process year after year after year. So you can be assured when you buy that bag of Daddy Peak products, it's going to be the same great product that you used the year before and the year before that. And it will be the next year. So we do thank all of our customers for buying. And again, this week has been a week where I've had a lot of questions, a lot of phone calls come in. So I do encourage you to go to our website and uh, just click on that button where it says ask a question. You can email that in or leave a comment. Maybe you have a comment. After the meeting that we had on Saturday at the Garden Center, great bunch of people called in. They actually uh, gave them my cell number too. So we got some calls going in on that. And I had some emails and they came out with some great questions. So this was the number one asked question last week at the group of people that I was talking to about 50 people. So I thought this would be the time to do that. So just keep in mind when you're doing composting, you need carbon, you need nitrogen, you need water, you need air. You need something that's brown, greens. Remember carbon brown, nitrogen green, moisture and the right amount and oxygen. Make sure that you do buy that composting thermometer. You can go on, you can go to Amazon and buy them. They're really not that expensive. Again, they're just longer where you can shoot it in to the pile and get a real temperature outside, inside reading. And when that thermometer is going up to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, 145, on up to 160. And what I say is flirting with the edge is 165. Go ahead and turn that. 
And again, as the temperatures outside gets hotter, so will the quicker your compost will heat back up and only be turned again. Turn at least five times with those heat. You know, I like to make a chart. Again, I'm a stickler for this. Just like I said, you get your journal out. If you've got a gardening journal, go ahead and add a place there for your composting. Write those temperatures down and the date and write the temperature down what it was outside. And that's going to tell you a lot because after a year of composting and you look at that, check your compost and you'll see, okay, what could I have done better? What really made it go? And here's another key too. You can go to your local extension office and you can get a soil sample kit. When you bring that compost out, take a sample of it, send it off, get them to check it for you, and they will tell you exactly how it's going to affect your garden. Tell them what you're going to be using. I'm going to be using this compost in my vegetable garden. And they will come back. They will let you know the pH, the soluble salts of it. Or does it have too much soluble salts? Does it not have enough lime? It tells you what you're adding to your soil. And then if you do add it, it's awful nice to go back and take that soil after it's been added, both of them together, and grab another the soil sample, then you'll know exactly what you need to do for the vegetable crops, for the herbs, for the fruits, for the perennials, for your bulbs, and you can use this compost for everything. So remember, grab your bag of daddy peats, composted dairy cow manure, and when you're starting those bins, add to it. And if you need to add along, bring it up a little bit, and that's the way to do it. You've already got something there that's alive. It's already got the microbes that's working in it. It's ready to go. So to kind of kickstart yours off, and I think that would be a great way and you'll be very satisfied with that. Well, I do want to thank each and every one of our customers for buying our products and being loyal to us. And we certainly do appreciate that. I do thank you for each and every one that calls in and your questions and your comments. So as I said, the first to show, if you get a chance, go ahead and go to our website, daddypeach.com. Look around that there. I think you'll find it very interesting. Well, until next time, I wish each and every one of you happy gardening. And this is Melvin York, and you've been listening to Gardening with Daddy Pete. Thank you for joining today's Gardening with Daddy Pete. You can check out our website at daddypeets.com for additional gardening tips and our podcast at gardeningwithdaddypete.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.